Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your commentary on the Bible, or you could call it your daily Bible class. Either way, today we're looking at Genesis chapter 4. What a great portion of Scripture. Before we start, let's have, an, uh, have a time of prayer. Father, once again, we thank you for your word. And now, Lord, as we spend time together, there's so many wonderful truths here from the story of Cain and Abel. But Lord, we ask today that your blessing would rest upon the this word in Genesis chapter 4. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's where we find ourselves yesterday. We spent some time in Genesis chapter 3, looking at the results of what happened to the fall. Now we spring ahead a few years, and we find that Adam and Eve have had two sons, and this is where we find it. It says in verse number 1 of chapter 4, and Adam laid with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Also, later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and but Abel brought fat portions of the firstborn of his flock. But um, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain, his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was angry and his face was downcast. So basically, here is Eve. She gives birth to Cain. He is the oldest of the son, carries the anointing, the dominion. And then there's Abel who comes along and one, they choose two different professions. One chooses to be a farmer. The other one chooses to be uh, a tiller uh, or a keeper of, of animals. Now, when it came time, they both brought an offering to the Lord. Abel brought his offering of portions of meat to the Lord, an offering like that. And then Cain brought his offering along and, uh, it was interesting. Now, the reason uh, there's a lot of concepts and ideas about what happened. Well, this is what my thought is. My thought is this, that uh, basically Cain knew what was required, but decided that he was going to bring what he thought. You see, Cain and Abel were, were both aware of what God required. God had already uh, chosen the means and methods of having his approval. And that was covering of sin. We learned last time that we were together or before that about the fact that God had slain an animal, covered Adam and Eve with that animal. So an animal had died and the whole idea of substitution had basically come into being. Abel got that concept, and so he brought an offering of an animal that had died, and he brought it before the Lord. He understood the requirements. Cain, however, even though he was the oldest and he carried the anointing with him and the dominion with him, decided that he was going to do what he wanted to. And that's often what happens. You know, religion is just that thing. Religion is actually the spirit and embodiment of Cain, where we think that we can bring what we want to God and say, God, here it is. It's acceptable to you because I think it's acceptable to you. And God looks down and says, no, 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 no. You need to know that I have demanded that life be given so that your sins can be covered and cleansed. But you see, Cain knew that, but chose not to do it. And that's often what happens. We come along and say, well, I don't like God's requirements. I don't want to do what God wants. I'm going to offer what I think. You know, it's like a man who is, is going to church and he says, you know what? I'm going to wear my second best clothes and not my best clothes. And, uh, in that Sunday, you know, God, the, the church is requiring us to bear, wear the best clothes. Basically, what we do is when we decide to do it our way, we are literally saying, God, I, I don't think what you require is enough. I'm going to do it my way. And uh, that almost sounds like the old Frank Sinatra song. So that's what I think concerning that. Well, then God said to Cain, why are you angry? 
Why is your face downcast? If you had done what is right, would you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door of your heart, and it desires to have you as its master. Now listen to this. This is such a powerful truth. The Lord says to Cain, Cain, you knew what was to do what was right, and you didn't do it. Now, sin is crouching at the door of your heart, and it wants to master you, but you can master it. You see, Cain was in that position of decision. We all are in that valley of decision. Are we going to do what God has asked us to do? Cain knew what was to do was right. And sin was sitting at the door of his heart, crouching to be his master. And he said, you can master this. This is your moment. This is your decision. You do not have to be mastered by sin. You do not have to be and allow the sin that came through your mom and dad to continue to be part of your situation. And that's such a powerful truth for us today. When we give our lives to Jesus Christ, what we are doing is we're breaking the power of sin. We're breaking a generational curse of sin and saying, I am going to start a brand new life. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, my family had been sinners for a long time and they were good at it. But when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I made a decision that my family was going to serve the Lord. I claimed the promise of Acts 16, 31. And as of this moment, I have four sons or four children that serve the Lord, two daughters and two sons, and their family is serving the Lord. My grandchildren are serving the Lord. I made a decision, and I made a decision to marry a godly wife, not just to have any person, but to have a godly wife. That's what we do. Sin crouches at the door of our hearts, and what we need to do is say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. I know your power, and I know how you can destroy my life. That's why James says this, when you go and rescue someone who is falling away and you're able to bring them back, you are saving them from a multitude of sin. That was what was happening at Cain at this time. But not what not Cain didn't. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were out in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said, where is your brother? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? And you know what the Lord said? What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Here is where we're going to stop. Because tomorrow we're going to talk about the consequences of sin. The Lord said, you're trying to hide this thing from me? You know, often we say, hey, It's not my responsibility. I don't know where he is. We try to cover our sins. We try to deflect it. We try to put it on other people. We try to blame others. But God knows all and sees all. He says, I don't know. He says, am I my brother's keeper? Basically, he was, I think he was in this moment trying to trivialize what he had done. He had taken his brother's life. The first murder had happened. And the Lord said, listen, your brother's blood cries out from the ground. I know exactly what you've done. And there are going to be some consequences that are going to come because of this. We need to realize that we need to take responsibility for what we do and also the consequences of the things that we do. This story powerfully illustrates so many things. It illustrates of the fact that when we know what to do is right and we don't do it, as James says, it becomes sin. And then when sin uh, is at the door of our heart and wants to be our master, we can simply say, no, I'm not going to allow you to be my master. But if we give in to sin, don't deflect it. Don't trivialize it. Don't make excuses. Simply repent and take ownership of it. You see, there are going to be consequences. But I love what it says in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is our choice and our responsibility to be able to take and man up to what we've done. Otherwise, the consequences can be too much for us. And we'll learn about those consequences tomorrow.
My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is the commentary of the Bible. You have yourself a great and godly night.